who was Raphael from Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze, and even a stunt double in the first movie. That's true, I was. Yes, thank you so much for joining it's us today. It's my pleasure to be here, Michelle. What inspired you to get into the martial arts? When I was a kid, I was a soccer player in North Carolina, and I used to play at some public fields. And uh, the public fields were right near the recreation center, and every time I'd go on Saturday morning, I'd walk through the recreation center, and there were all these guys in pajamas and colored belts kicking and punching. And I just thought it was really cool. So I went to the library, I got a book on karate, went out in my backyard, and I just started doing all the stances and the punches. And my dad saw I was interested, and he made a deal with me. He said, if you want to take karate, he said, I'll pay for it. At the time, it was $15 a month. And he said, but if you ever quit, he goes, you got to pay me back. And that was a deal that he made for me for a year. So I started the program, and now it's, what, uh, 25, almost 30 years later. And I always ask my dad now, if I quit now, do I have to pay you back for the last 30 years of martial arts? <laughs> did you train at more than one dojo growing up? Did you try different places or did you stick with one style? No, when I was a kid and started studying, I studied just Goju Karate um, for my, up until I went to college. And uh, I competed nationally all over the country. And then once I went to college, I started training with other students, other schools, other teachers, just wherever, wherever I could get some work in. And uh, then when I moved to Los Angeles to pursue my career, I started studying uh, Shaolin and Taoist Kung Fu, Chinese Kenpo, Tai Chi, and a little bit of a Filipino art called Lima Lama. So you did get a lot of different styles in yeah, there. Yeah. Which does help with getting into stunt double work, which you eventually did. Uh, what inspired you to go into that direction, into the media? Well, I knew that I wanted to be in the movies ever since I was a kid. I've loved action movies my whole life, martial arts movies, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, you name it. So as I got older and started studying martial arts, uh, I was also acting at the time. I was doing local theater, I was in theater in school, it was one of the things I sort of excelled at. So I knew I wanted to be an actor, and fortunately growing up in North Carolina, they had a movie studio there in Wilmington, which was about four hours from where I grew up, near the, near the beach was the movie studio. And I used to drive down there during my summers and work as an extra. And uh, one time the people that were in charge of hiring the extras said, Hey, you do martial arts, right? I said, yeah. They said, we've got this movie coming here called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They said, we're going to be casting all these extras to do martial arts. So if you'd like to come down and give it a try, that would be great. So uh, I was like, sure. I, I drove down when the audition showed up. Went and auditioned for Pat Johnson, who was the stunt coordinator of, for the film. And uh, I ended up being one of the foot soldiers, actually. That was my start in the Ninja Turtle movies. I was actually talkative foot number two in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Talking foot. So what was your line? Well, some of them were cut out. Uh, I had a couple <laughs> of lines. Uh, one of them was, uh, I'm going to turn you into turtle soup. And then, um, I can't remember the other one. At one point, I think the only one that was left was me calling for some battle axes that are called Bacentos. Oh. And I just went, Bacentos, now. I do remember that scene in Actually, the apartment. Yeah, my most famous foot part in the movie is when all the foot soldiers crash into April's house and they're surrounded and one of them, and Michelangelo goes, oh, a fellow chucker, eh? I'm the guy in black doing the nunchucks against Michelangelo. You're the chucker. I'm the chucker. Oh, wow. What, oh, so <laughs> that just took me by surprise. I did not know that. That's very cool because that was one of my favorite scenes in the movie and I know everyone knows that scene. Yeah. Now, before the movie, did you work intensively with the nunchucks, or...? Yeah, you know, growing up as a martial artist, starting when I was really young, everybody picks up nunchucks at some point, so... I actually used to put on a skateboard helmet and practice with my nunchucks in front of the mirror and bonk myself in the head sometimes. So when it actually <laughs> came down to the film, um, they wanted, we, we, had a nun, we had to have a nunchuck competition, all the foot soldiers. And uh, I, I guess I won the nunchuck competition, I got to do it. and. Um, Here's a little bit of patting myself on the back, but at one point, after we filmed the scene the first time, the producers came back and they said, you have to slow down, we can't see the nunchucks on camera, because they're moving too fast. So we had to shoot part of it again, and I had to do the moves a lot slower. Now, that, that's, that's interesting news that I know I haven't heard anywhere else. So. That's some Ninja Turtle yeah. trivia for you guys out there. Now, uh, outside of uh, martial arts and uh, acting, did you have any other hobbies or anything growing up that you were into? Well, wow, martial arts was a big part of my life. I competed, I practiced, I taught. That really took up most of my time. So while everybody else was playing football, baseball, basketball, whatever, 
I was pretty much in the dojo working out and uh, competing, having a great time, and it opened a lot of doors for me in Hollywood. So. So it seems, so Ninja Turtles was officially your first stunt movie? Yeah, it was my first job. First job. Yeah, it was my very first job. Now, I know you were a foot soldier. Uh, how did you get into being a stunt double turtle? I actually ended up getting cast as one of the foot soldiers. But there was many foot soldiers. There was, uh, there was like five major foot soldiers and then like 20 other foot soldiers. And I wasn't really getting any attention. And um, all the, like three, four other foot soldiers were getting all the work. This is during the rehearsal process, before we started shooting. So every major stunt fight that came up, the stunt coordinators kept working with these other guys. So finally, at one point, they were trying to figure out how to do this one shot where Donatello was skateboarding down the sewer, and with his staff, he's knocking foot soldiers out, left and right, all the way. One of the things they wanted to do is they wanted somebody to look over their shoulder and run away. They wanted somebody to run away from Donatello. And as they're running away, Donatello hits them with the staff at the feet and he's supposed to fly up in the air and collapse. Well, two, three guys tried it and they couldn't do it. They couldn't get the timing right. It looked like they were stopping and setting up and throwing. So I walked over and I thought, this is my chance right here. So I walked over to the stunt coordinator and I just kind of quietly said, hey, I can do that. And they're like, okay, you give it a try. So I went out there and I started running. The guy skateboarded up behind me, hit me with the thing. I flew through the air, bam, hit the ground, and it worked perfect. And they were like, okay, you got that. So from that point forward, pretty much every foot thing that came up, they were like, Ken, come on and do it. So it was me and a couple of other guys that were doing all the, the foot soldier stuff. So in the first movie, when you see the foot getting beat up, you see a lot of guys out there, but occasionally when you see one foot soldier featured, it's either me or one other guy doing stuff. Funny enough, when I later went on to become Raphael in the first movie, you see me beating myself up. If you knew who was who, I'm beating myself up and falling down. It's kind of cool. But what happened was, as I was doing all this footwork in the movie, they had one of the stunt doubles for Raphael and in the scene in Central Park where Casey Jones hits him with a hockey stick and Raph flies through the air and hits the trash can. They took this poor stunt guy from Hong Kong who was doubling for Raphael. They held him up by his feet and they dropped him head first into the trash can. When they did, the turtle head came down and broke his nose. So from that point forward, he could not wear the turtle head. So they needed somebody else to be the stunt double for the rest of the movie for Raphael. So based on what I had done as a foot soldier, the stunt coordinator came to me and said, hey, we want you to now step up and become one of the turtles. And I was like, awesome. So we went into the creature shop and all the stunt doubles in the first movie, except for Ernie Reyes Jr., all the stunt guys in the first movie were from Hong Kong. Well, I'm a little bit bigger and thicker than all these guys from Hong Kong. So we had to, in order for me to become Raphael, I had to put on like Donatello's hands and Leonardo's shoulders and Michelangelo's legs. So I was basically a Frankenstein turtle made out of all the different body parts from the other turtles, except I got Raphael's head. So from that point forward, I became the stunt double for Raphael because that guy couldn't do it anymore because he was hurt. So I was the Frankenstein Raphael doing all the, the fighting. So how heavy was the, the shell of the stunt turtle? Well, the, the stunt turtle shell was the exact same shell that the actor turtles wore. The only thing that was different was the computer and remote control um, device that was hanging on her back was not underneath the shell. So the computer and the, and the remote device is what weighed so much. The shell itself probably weighed, you know, I, I'd be making, I'd say 10 to 12 pounds maybe. Now was it hard plastic like what I read in the interviews or was it uh, something like... No, no, it was, it, was, it was soft. It wasn't, the, the, the costume was made out of varying degrees of foam latex. So the legs, the hands, things like that were the softest and most pliable and the shell was a little bit more solid and it was coated with some kind of shellac, <laughs> I might say. <laughs> and that made it a little bit harder. But you could still, if you pushed on it, you could push down into it. I remember reading an article in US Magazine where they said that the shell was 40 pounds of plastic for the actor turtles in the second movie. That's why it surprised me just now because I thought those were plastic and the uh, stunt doubles were soft. Or soft. No, the, no the, stunt, the, the shells were the same, but I think wow. what they're talking about is the addition of the computer and the remote control device okay. that was inside. And that made it very chunky. So what was your favorite thing about being a stunt turtle while working on the first turtle movie? 
Um, I think my favorite thing was being just involved in the Hollywood filmmaking process. Um, I mean, overall, it was my dream since I was a kid to be in the movies. So then to be there on a real set and working with stuntmen and lights and actors and just the, the whole experience, I, I couldn't say that one thing in particular was the best, but all of it together was just a dream come true. Any bloopers or anything on the first movie that you remember that stands out working as a turtle? That didn't make it into the movie? Yeah, that did not make it into the movie. No, the only thing, I, there, there wasn't necessarily a blooper that happened on camera, but I just remember one time the puppeteers from the Henson Creature Shop wanted to play a joke on the producers. And the, the turtle suits themselves were very expensive. I think I was told that the, on the first movie, they averaged out at about a quarter million dollars per turtle. Well, they decided they wanted to play a trick on the producers, so they rigged up a fake turtle head, and they put it on a stand. Now, mind you, throughout the course of the filming, your, the turtle heads were constantly breaking down. There was always downtime, because this was new technology at the time. So there's always, we'd be sitting around for an hour, two hours, waiting for things to get fixed. Not because the guys didn't know what they were doing, but because it was new technology and it was being pushed to the limits. So they decided to sort of extrapolate that concept out, see if they could get the, get the goat of the producers. The puppeteers took one of the heads and they, with special effects, they mounted a smoke bomb inside it. So as we were getting ready to film this big scene, we were getting ready to do it, they are like, all right, let's start up the heads. And they turned on one of the heads and the smoke bomb just went off on the heads and the producers freaked out. And then finally the puppeteers let them know. So that was the funniest thing that I remember happening that I can talk about on a PG interview. How did you go from being a stunt turtle in the uh, first movie to actually being the actor turtle in the second movie? So, being a stunt double and, and working in the stunt crew of the first film was a dream come true, but it also felt to me like it was a step to keep moving forward. Well, we shot the first movie and it, it was a bigger success than anybody ever thought it was going to be. So immediately when that happened, they knew they wanted to make a second movie. Well, I got a call from somebody that was involved in the production process, and they knew that my goal was ultimately to be an actor. And this person, who shall remain nameless at this point, gave me a call and said, hey, I just want you to know that we're getting ready to start casting the second movie, and they definitely want you to come back and be the stunt double for Raphael. He goes, but I want to tell you a secret. The actor, Josh, who played the first Raphael, is not coming back. So they're looking for a new Raphael. So within a couple of days, I got a call from the producers. David Chan, actually, the producer of the first movie, he said, hey, Ken, we're getting ready to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, and we'd love for you to be the stunt double for Raphael. And I said, well, that sounds great, David. I really appreciate that. I said, but I also heard that you might be looking for some actors to play Raphael or some of the other turtles. And I said, I'd really like to pursue that if I could. And he kind of hemmed and hawed for a minute, and he said, well, here's what you do. He goes, put yourself on videotape, uh, acting out a couple of scenes from the first movie, like Raphael, and then send that to us. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, great. Well, they, I kind of knew they didn't want to lose me or anybody else as one of the stunt doubles they already had because they knew they had somebody that could do what they wanted. The last thing they want to do is go on a search for somebody else to do that. But I thought, all right, well, let me give it a chance anyway. So here I am in North Carolina, they're all the way in Hollywood. I called a buddy of mine. And I said, hey, can you come to my house? Bring your video camera. We'll stand out in the front yard, and I'm going to act like Raphael. So he brought his camera over, and I'm out there going, hey, dude, what's happening? And doing all this Raphael stuff. And just as I'm doing that, just as we finished it, I called up the producer, and I said, hey, I got the tape. What address can I send it to? He said, oh, well, send it to this address, but you need to send it to me overnight. I was like, oh, OK, whatever I got to do. Well, lo and behold, I get on the phone to call FedEx or whoever can deliver overnight, and it turns out it's Memorial Day. There is no service overnight, but he wants it there overnight. So I'm freaking out. This is the chance of a lifetime. I don't know what to do. So I drive to the airport. I go to the counter for Delta Airlines, and I say, I need to get this VHS videotape to Los Angeles by tomorrow. How much will that cost me? $135. And I think, well, I've already got the stunt job, so that'll pay for the $135, but it's really worth it. So I paid the $135, I sent the tape out, it got there, I got a call the next day, and he said, hey Ken, 
I got your tape, but we're gonna audition about 60 or 70 other guys out here and we'll let you know. So I was like, all right, whatever. I gave it my best shot, no problem. Within about two weeks or so, I got a call from the producer and he said, congratulations, Kim, you're the new Raphael. And I was like, wow, celebrate, celebrate. And that was it. So somehow that tape of me in my front yard wearing a shirt very similar to this, <laughs> pretending to be Raphael, got me the job. So getting to go to Jim Henson's Creature Shop is one of those moments that not many people could say they got to do. And you were there in London. What was the Creature Shop like and how long were you there for? The Creature Shop was really a thrilling place to go. And it was kind of a funny place to go too because it wasn't necessarily what you would expect. When you walked into the Creature Shop, it literally looked like you were in somebody's garage with just stuff everywhere. And when I say stuff, you might move something aside and there's a mold for Kermit the Frog. Or you might move something else aside and find the trunk for Mr. Snuffleupagus. So anywhere you turned, you could see stuff. Um, it was it was really fascinating. Um, the people were great. It certainly it was my first trip overseas, so to deal with the uh, English culture and the humor that was over there was really a lot of fun. Um, being at the creature shop was kind of funny because when you walk in and you meet everybody who's working there, and you know nobody knows anybody from the creature shop because the the Muppets and the puppets from all the different shows they've done are what are so famous. The people are not, but the people and their personalities are really what breathe life into that whole organization. And sort of one of the most unique parts of going to the Creature Shop was when it's time to get your body cast made. And when you get your body cast made, you have to go down into the basement with all these guys who speak with these great heavy cockney accents. And they, they basically, in a way, they kind of crucify you. You stand in this one particular spot on the floor and they hang these loops, these thongs from the ceiling. You have to put your hands in the thongs like that. And then basically, you've got five or six English guys. Oh, you have to put on this single, this body suit that's so, you know, all from here down. And then you've got these five English guys just plop in hot plaster of Paris all over your body. And um, as I'm doing it, they're telling me, like, you're standing exactly where David Bowie stood when we made his copy, you know, costume for, you know, Labyrinth. It was Labyrinth, right? Labyrinth. Yeah, Labyrinth. You're standing right where David Bowie stood and all these other people that have been through there and everything. So that was great. The second part of it was great was during my downtime there, um, they had all the videotapes of various Henson creations like um, storytellers. So working in the costumes, did you find it harder to do a full actor suit than the stunt double suit was maneuvering around? Uh, was the weight of it any balance problems or anything? No, not really. In, in, when you move from stunt double to um, actor turtle, or a stunt, I never say stunt double, I say stunt turtle in actor turtle. <laughs> when you move from stunt turtle to actor turtle, um, basically your responsibilities for doing the action scenes are taken away from you once you become an actor. So taking on the extra suit, the, cumber, the cumbersomeness of all the mechanics doesn't really affect you in a negative way other than the physical wear and tear it puts on your body just kind of spending six hours you know, in it before lunch and then six hours after lunch. So it didn't really affect you in terms of balance. However, what it did affect is uh, the dehydration and the breathing. If you open a turtle mouth, there's a, foam, there's a latex tongue and sort of gum and teeth in there. What happens is that it stops your carbon dioxide from escaping the mask. So with that being there, after just a couple of minutes, after five minutes of the mask, you're basically recycling your own carbon dioxide. So you get exhausted right away. We get dehydrated. A couple of guys suffered nosebleeds in the suit. One guy threw up in his own suit. One time a guy passed out in the suit. So dealing with the heat and the dehydration, that was the big challenge. What have you gone on to do after the turtle movies? Well, since the Turtle movies, I uh, acted in a few other films. I made some other martial arts films. I was in a very popular movie called Showdown with Billy Blanks, which was basically a ripoff of Karate Kid. I played the Ralph Macchio character, showed up at a new school, got beat up, and instead of uh, Mr. Miyagi, I had Billy Blanks, who was a former police officer working as a janitor at the school who teaches me martial arts. So that was a hugely successful film. I was in that. And then I went on to work with uh, Cynthia Rothrock and Roddy McDowell and some other people in some other films. 
And then, um, and then I went behind the camera and started writing and directing. And uh, a few years ago, I wrote and directed a film called Adventures of Johnny Dow, which is a family-friendly kung fu movie that's actually available now on Stars and Encore. Um, and now I continue to uh, write and direct. I um, direct a lot of action sequences and historical recreations for History Channel, Discovery Channel, stuff like that. And I'm getting ready to do another movie now called Demon Schoolgirl Assassin. I like that title. That sounds like fun. <laughs> um, why did you go back for Turtles 3? Because I was making Showdown with Billy Blanks and I got oh. to play a human. Oh, easier than being back into the costume. And uh, is there anything that you're working on now that you would like to, uh, well, you just told us about the one, schoolgirl one. Demon schoolgirl Demon assassin. Demon schoolgirl assassin. Uh, and, uh, any information on that you would like to share, like a release date, or if this is... No, I'll just say, uh, watch for Demon Schoolgirl Assassin coming to theaters, cable, and a video store near you. Is there anything you would like to say to the Turtle fans watching this? I would like to say thanks for everybody supporting the Ninja Turtles throughout the years. Uh, I'm a fan just like everybody else, and if I ever get the chance to meet you or you meet me, please come up and say hello, and uh, I'll say cowabunga, and keep kicking. Michelle, I want to thank you very much for your time. Thanks for everybody for watching. And Calabunga to Calabunga Corner. See you next time where we talk about the Ninja Turtle voice actors throughout the years. Yeah.